Hello and welcome to this edition of FYI Weekly, your official source for the latest news and information from the City of Greensboro. The City of Greensboro Community Food Task Force will host four community connection forums throughout the year. The Community Food Task Force is a group of partner organizations and government agencies working toward a healthier Greensboro through advocacy and increased access to nutrition and local foods. The first topic is Summer Meals for Youth. That forum will take place on Tuesday, February 11th at 2 p.m. at the Barber Park Event Center. Each Community Connection Forum will consist of a presentation from one partner organization or panel discussion on a timely topic, followed by a sharing session. Individuals or groups are invited to provide updates on feeding programs and related news. The time and location for each forum is 2 p.m. at the Barber Park Event Center located at 1502 Barber Park Drive. Dates and topics for the Community Connection Forum are as follows. February 11th for Summer Meals for Youth, May 12th Health and Hunger, August 11th Food Policy and Advocacy, and November 10th Keeping It Local Fresh Food Access. For more information about the Community Food Task Force, visit the city's website. The International Civil Rights Center and Museum invites you to attend its annual gala on Saturday, February 1st, in celebration of national and local activists who made significant contributions to advancing human and civil rights. The gala will take place at 7 p.m. at the Special Event Center in the Greensboro Coliseum Complex. The Civil Rights Center and Museum will mark the milestone 60th anniversary of America's most recognized lunch counter sit-in protests against segregated public eating establishments in the South. This event will also celebrate the 10th anniversary of the museum's opening. The museum has invited Barack Obama, 44th President of the United States, to be honored with the Alston Jones International Civil and Human Rights Award. The Reverend Al Sharpton will be honored for his continued work on behalf of civil rights and human equality with the Lifetime Achievement Award. Famed actor and activist Danny Glover will be presented the Trailblazer Award. Other honorees include Clayola Brown, union leader and labor activist, the Reverend Dr. Cardis Brown Jr. and Dr. Linda Brown and Emma Washington. These ladies will be honored for their role in the F.W. Woolworth 1960 lunch counter integration. To purchase individual tickets or a table, please call LaTanya Wiley at 336-274-9199 or visit the museum's website. Parks and Recreation will offer a winter hike on the Laurel Bluff Trail at 1 p.m. on Saturday, February 1st. Admission will be single-serve snack food or a winter jacket, which will be donated to the Interactive Resource Center to assist residents experiencing homelessness. Space on the hike is limited. Reservations can be made online. Participants should meet at the head of the Laurel Bluff Trail on Lake Brant Road at 12.30 p.m. for parking and donation collection. Laurel Bluff is a total of 6.5 miles round trip, and the hike is moderately strenuous based on the distance and terrain. For more information regarding this program and others offered at the City Lakes, visit the City's website. In an effort to help each of us improve our quality of life, the City has partnered with Cone Health for a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Let's check in with our friends at Cone Health for today's news for your health. Did you know that over 7.5 million people are seen in physicians' offices for shoulder pain every year? We'd like to share with you today a series of exercises that we found are helpful to regain mobility and strength and prevent injury in the shoulder. So we'd like to demonstrate for you one of the exercises that we find is very important to keep your shoulder healthy. This first exercise isolates the group of muscles that we call the external rotators, an important part of the rotator cuff. And this is performed by holding an elastic band or a bungee cord between your hands with your elbows safe at your side and rotating your hands apart. It's important to keep your elbows close to your side and to keep your shoulders low. Don't hike them up close to your ears, but again in a relaxed position down low. 
would recommend doing three sets of 10 repetitions of this exercise three to five days a week. So the second exercise for healthy shoulders involves an exercise called shoulder extension. This helps to isolate the muscles that attach to the shoulder blade and helps with stability. This is called shoulder extension. You utilize an elastic band, grasp with your hands, elbows straight, and to begin with, you want to pinch your shoulder blades together behind you and then draw your hands backwards. That's the shoulder extension. And again, we recommend performing this three sets, 10 repetitions, three to five days a week. Now, these elastic bands can be attached to a doorknob or any other stationary object around the house. You see how Noelle keeps her shoulders level, they're not rising up next to her ears, and it's very important to keep the shoulders down to get the full effect of this exercise. The third exercise for a healthy shoulder we call a horizontal row. And this again is performed with an elastic band or a bungee cord. In this one, you want the band to be attached roughly at shoulder height. So you might need to sit down if you're attaching the band to a doorknob, or you can put a knot in the elastic band and close it in the door so that it's at about your shoulder height. And you're gonna grasp the elastic band with your arms straight, and then you'll be pulling your hands in towards your chest. You pinch your shoulder blades together at the onset, and then you'll pull your arms in, and then slowly release keeping your shoulders level, not hiking them up near your ears, but keeping them down low. And again, three sets of 10 repetitions, three to five times a week. Certain shoulder positions and movements can very, be very hard on the group of muscles that we call the rotator cuff, in particular overhead reaching and lifting. So the military press, which Tracy's demonstrating, can put excess stress on the rotator cuff muscles, and it's generally an exercise that we would recommend people avoid. In addition, dropping the barbell behind the head and up onto the back of the neck also puts the shoulder in a compromised position that can cause stress and strain and irritate the rotator cuff and shoulder girdle muscles. Our final recommendation for a healthy shoulder is to make sure that you're always lifting and reaching in safe positions. You want to make sure that you maintain proper posture. You can see Noelle sitting up nice and straight and as she's reaching, she wants to make sure that she uses good body mechanics. You want to avoid reaching in awkward positions, such as when you're driving your car, reaching into the back seat for an object. It's a position that puts the shoulder at a disadvantage, and we often see people come in with shoulder injuries from lifting in awkward positions. So take the time to find a safe, comfortable position. Use your power zone with your hands in front of you, your elbows at your side, elbows below your shoulders. That's the safe zone. Regular exercise is a critically important part of a healthy lifestyle for people of all ages and activity levels. Regular exercise improves our strength and endurance, can help prevent injury, and helps in our recovery. Maintaining a full range of motion and normal strength in the shoulder is the key to pain-free shoulder motion. Please visit conehealth.com slash orthopedics for more information. I'm Dr. Kevin Supple. When it comes to affordable housing, there are several opinions and approaches to solving this real dilemma facing many communities. The City of Greensboro wants to hear from you. We'll have that story and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. The City of Greensboro wants to know what you think is more important when it comes to affordable housing. Share comments in an online survey by Wednesday, February 12th. Responses will be included in the Neighborhood Development Department's 10-year affordable housing plan called Housing GSO. For the past several months, staff has been conducting surveys and collecting feedback on a variety of housing issues. Four focus areas have been identified that would best meet the current housing needs in Greensboro. The focus areas are as follows. Affordable rental housing, neighborhood revitalization, affordable home ownership, and supportive housing. 
Each focus area includes four recommendations on how to turn the focus area into a reality. Residents can rank in priority order the four focus areas and then the four recommendations within each area. For more information about the plan, call Caitlin Bowers, the city's community development analyst, at 336-433-7266. The U.S. Census has identified the top five reasons why completing the Census 2020 is the best thing residents can do. Number five, the Census identifies how many college students live on and off campus in our community. Students, infants, and children should also be counted because they use the community's educational programs and services. Number four, this supports plans for new housing, which improves neighborhoods. Developers need to know market strength and financial standing to invest in various types of housing. Housing needs also take into account how many people live in our emergency and transitional shelters. Number three, the census determines the number of representatives in Congress and if any district boundaries need to be redrawn. Losing a congressional representative affects an area's voice on important social, legal, and economic issues. Number two, it helps to understand the need of our diverse community in order to provide everyone with equal opportunities to live, work, and play in Greensboro. And the number one reason to complete the census, it results in updates to our water and sewer lines, roads, public transportation, and green spaces. For more information about Census 2020, please visit the city's website. Greensboro Downtown Parks Incorporated is kicking off its annual Friends of the Park campaign. Donations help bring local artists, free programs, and community events to the downtown parks, keeping these spaces safe and accessible for all visitors. Contributions are tax deductible. There are a few options set up for giving. Text to give is as easy as texting my park to 44321. You can visit the website to make a donation online or call 336-373-7533 to request a pledge envelope by mail. If you would like to be more connected to the downtown parks and you're a young person in search of a summer job, consider becoming a park ambassador with Greensboro Downtown Parks. These awesome folks are the faces of LeBauer and Center City Parks, helping to serve residents and visitors through active, inviting, and safe public green spaces. The park ambassador position offers flexible hours and the potential for year-round work and is an ideal opportunity for college students. For more information, call Greensboro Downtown Parks at 336-373-7533. Fast-tracking the process for higher education is an option when it comes to a couple of new programs at Guilford Technical Community College. Coming up after the break, we'll take a closer look at these opportunities. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. Guilford Technical Community College is continuously adding programs to its curriculum to meet the needs of its students. Now the college has a new solution for those in need of a GED or qualified students who want to work in the food service industry. Joining me now to tell us about both programs is Zeladith Blakely. She is the Associate Dean of Adult Education at GTCC. Hello, Dean Blakely. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to have you back. Always good to see you. Thank you so much. So tell me again, what falls under the umbrella of adult education? Well, we have three main programs. One is what we call adult basic education. Okay. And that is for uh, students who want to remediate in reading, math, writing. Okay. Um, we have adult secondary ed for adults who, they're still doing some remediation, mm -hmm. but in preparation for a high school equivalency, such okay. as a GED. Okay. And then lastly, we have our English as a Second Language program, or English for Speakers of Other Languages, okay. to help those whose native language is something other than English become more proficient in reading, writing, and speaking the English okay. language. So with the GED option, you now have something new that you're calling the Fast Track GED. What's the difference between that and your traditional GED program? Sure, so we're really excited mm -hmm. about um, our Fast Track offering. We're able to, um, in partnership with NC Works, we're able to offer qualified students who are aged 16 
to 24, okay. um, an opportunity to work, get their high school equivalency in 45 days. Oh, wow. And so in doing so, students are taking classes Monday through Friday from 9 until 2 um, to help them mm -hmm. in that endeavor. Um, we have vouchers to help them um, defray the cost of the actual mm -hmm. equ equivalency exam. We have um, bus passes to assist them with transportation. Yeah, you're really giving them not just a boost, but you're making sure they can get there and you're making sure they can pay for this. So 45 days, how long would it normally take to get a GED if you don't do the fast track? So um, it varies. You know, when students come to our program, they come with varied strengths. Okay. Um, some have a stronger skill set than others. Mm -hmm. um, a lot, there are a lot of factors that go into that. It, it depends on, um, you know, how well they attend, okay. how engaged they are when they are attending, mm -hmm. the skill set that they brought with them when they come. And so for some, it's very short. Yes. For others, we get to know our students really well over a period of time. Okay. Well, it's good to know that that is an opportunity in the event that someone needs a faster way of acquiring their GED. If I may, yes. One, um, one of the other, another beauty of the um, Fast Track program is that it provides apprenticeship opportunities. Oh, wow. Um, where students can work um, on aviation mm -hmm. or HVAC, heating and air, okay. um, allied health. And so when they get their GED, they can graduate with not only their credential, but that's also a skill set to okay. help them get to work a lot sooner. Oh, that's fantastic. Now you have two other programs, one called Power and another Power Pathways for Food Service. What's the difference between those two? So with our Power program, it is designed for our adult students who have intellectual or developmental disabilities. Okay. And it provides them an opportunity to work on their reading, their math, computer, and job skills. And students have to qualify um, in order to participate in that program. And so with Power Pathways, same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, the difference being students um, work in the culinary okay. or food supply okay. industries. And so through that program, students can work on um, basic cookery, okay. menu planning, food safety, mm -hmm. nutrition. And um, there is also an opportunity through that program for students to earn their Serve Safe certification, okay. which is um, a, a credential that is sought after mm -hmm. and um, recognized in the industry. So you've given us several wonderful programs that individuals can take advantage of pertaining to GED, um, food service, and if they qualify. So how can residents register and how soon would they be able to begin? So for our POWER program, it's offered on both High Point and the Greensboro campuses. Our Pathways Food Service program, the next cohort will be held on the Greensboro campus and it will begin on February the 17th. And for our Fast Track program, um, it too will be offered on the Greensboro campus and the next cohort will begin on March the 16th. So anyone that's interested can always call the college at 336-334 4822, extension 53107, and they can also access the website gtcc.edu under academics, under the academics tab. Okay, wonderful. Well, Dean Blakely, you have so much going on and so many wonderful opportunities for individuals who need the assistance to get their adult education checked off the list. We always love to help you promote those programs. Do come back, keep us posted on new programs and updates on these. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stay tuned for a tidbit of useful information about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. One way to stay informed about decisions that impact our city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesday of the month. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. 
The Greensboro City Council meetings are open to the public, but if you cannot make it to City Hall, we broadcast the meetings right here on GTN. The meetings are also streamed live on the city's website and on Roku. City Council meetings take place on Level 2 of the Melvin Municipal Office Building located at 300 West Washington Street. To review the Council meeting schedule and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. Members of the Triad Chapter of the North Carolina Native Plant Society were instrumental in the creation of the Bird, Bee, and Butterfly Pollinator Garden. It's located along the Muddy Creek Stream at Woven Works Park on the downtown Greenway. The group has assisted with maintenance for the last several years. Through their hard work, along with other local environmental civic organizations and with volunteers from surrounding universities, the garden has thrived and is a beautiful example of how native plants can flourish with the care and maintenance of volunteers. The North Carolina Native Plant Society's mission is to promote the enjoyment and conservation of North Carolina's native plants and their habitats through education, protection, propagation, and advocacy. The city is grateful for the time and dedication so many volunteers have invested to make the downtown Greenway enjoyable for all residents. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight, but first, prepare to mark your calendar for all the great events happening this week on the town. Hey, this is Lana. There's a lot going on in Greensboro, so let's get started. Beginning this week, Jurassic World comes to life for the first time in a touring arena show at the Greensboro Coliseum. Join a team of scientists that are trying to unravel a corrupt plan and save Genie, an all-new dinosaur, from a terrible fate. Along the way, experience some of Jurassic World's most iconic dinosaurs, including Blue the Raptor, Triceratops, Pteranodons, and the mighty Tyrannosaurus Rex. For showtimes, visit GreensboroColiseum.com. On Friday, head over to the Carolina Theater for two North Carolina duos for an evening of original Americana music in The Crown. Brown Mountain Lightning Bugs and Admiral Radio will be performing their rooted folk music styles beginning at 7 p.m. For more information, visit carolinatheater.com. Also on Friday night, don't miss Laser Metallica at the Greensboro Science Center's Omnisphere. This spectacular laser light show features a mix of some of Metallica's greatest hits, including Enter Sandman, One, and Fuel. Showtimes are 7, 8, and 9 p.m. Seating is limited, so be sure to get your tickets. For more information, visit GreensboroScience.org. On Sunday, head out to Lake Townsend for waterfowl birding pontoon tours. Bring your binoculars and look for waterfowl who have come to spend the winter on Lake Townsend. The tour begins at 3 p.m. and space is limited, so call 336-373-3741 to reserve seats. Also on Sunday, the Triad Stage is beginning its run of Two Wolves and a Lamb. The local elections in Hawborough and C pit old friends against each other and special interests rule. Immerse yourself in the rush of the campaign and become a participant as you vote in the election and decide the end of the story. For showtimes, visit triadstage.org. Keep watching FYI Weekly right here in GTN to find out about more events happening on the town. Welcome back. The City of Greensboro has more than 20 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. The Communications and Marketing Department encourages residents to bookmark the winter closings pages on the city's website. This is the best way to stay up to date on changes to city government services and hours of operations during inclement weather. Simply visit greensboro-nc.gov slash winter closings on the city's website. The winter closings page features a link to an interactive map that shows where snow plows are operating throughout Greensboro. There are also links to the city's official Facebook and Twitter pages. 
The page also includes the list of local television stations that report city government closings and delayed openings. Now is the ideal time to visit the city's website and bookmark the winter closings page in advance of any winter weather events. Straight ahead on the other side of the break is this week's Way to Go GSO shout out. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout out. This week's shout out goes to City Manager David Parrish. He is inviting 100 men to mentor 100 boys throughout Greensboro. The city is partnering with United Way's Mentoring Matters Initiative to increase the number of mentors and improve the lives of young men most impacted by violent crime. Mentoring relationships are at their best when connections are made between a caring adult and a young person who knows someone is there to help guide them through life. Pledge to be a mentor today by contacting the United Way of Greater Greensboro. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Alexa users can subscribe to our five-minute flash briefings. Be sure to download our weekly podcast, Talk City Greensboro, and now GTN is streaming on Roku. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.